Well, I can't believe how lucky I got here on this on this piece. That keeper. I'll have to double check my numbers, but I need a piece one inch. Alright, that's one inch. With a half inch bore. Alright, that's half inch. And one eighth of an inch thick. And that's uh almost three sixteenths. So I'm almost made. All I need to do is part off the washer. So uh, I'm going to face it real quick. Well, I'm going to go get my mating part and I'm going to just double check. All right. Let's see here. Let's back here. I got two parts that mate to this thing. The uh, This thing's kind of grungy, but this recess right here that's what the keeper is going to rest against and this will be the surface that's when you back the screw up it'll be lifting this piece and then you know lifting the quill also so get in here and that is uh one inch and 42 thousandths so one inch will make uh because this excuse me the uh the screw that's moving up and down here, it doesn't rotate, but this whole part's going to be spinning around it, so uh, we don't want it super tight. We don't want it to bind in there. Yeah, it'll give room for it to expand if it heats up. I'm pretty sure that was probably planned by them. It doesn't look like it's worn. So, that fits pretty good there. Oh, let's see, that was 42. Alright, but... It's not going to go down that far, but it's definitely it's plenty good enough for resting there. Okay, and the other part is going to be this groove right here. If memory serves, it was around a half inch. It's about 26 thousandths under half. So again. This part's not moving, but the part uh, that washer or that keeper may spin in there. So that'll probably work. So I think we're pretty good here. I'm going to face it. And then uh, we're going to have to cut a slot in this once we get it off of there. So and I don't know if you can see it here, but I've got a, some set screw holes in this piece. So I need to cut a slot anyway. So I think that's going to work pretty good. Okay, let's see if we can go back up in speed since we're working with steel now.
sword. And you can't see what's going on there, can you? Let me move on. stuff. There's one enough to part it off, plus uh, you know, a little bit for, I have to try to flip it around and face it back off. Alright. Alright, this is really hanging out too far, but I got a 
set of Allen wrenches that I can't quite get them to, to grab properly. Uh, I hope this doesn't give me too much grief here. or something in here and finish cutting that off. I need to get an Allen wrench that works good here. Anyway, all right, we're gonna cut for now. I'll cut it off off camera. All right, well, so much for that fiasco. All right, so I got it cut off. There it is right here. Just gotta face that. Get it to thickness. I need to practice my parting here or figure out Figure out exactly what my problem is. Back gear is locked in. See how it looks. Calipers here. Should be able to get in here and measure this.
chicken out right there because I think yeah I'm actually cutting below the surface of these jaws but I've got it's just chamfered a little bit so I'm, if I go anymore I'm gonna hit some we'll take it out see if this is gonna fit into our slot or not right. fits Play in there. We'll clean up this thing here a little bit. Okay. So we're one inch or a little under. We're at, uh, one, two, three thousandths under. Should be good enough for that. That fits in there pretty good. Yeah. Can you play? Okay, so now what we got to do is this will be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to have to saw it, and uh, I'm going to have to saw it open here on the side where it's about a half inch wide. So maybe I'll get a gauge block or something and do a little layout, put a line there, and then I can saw through it with the hacksaw, and then I'll clean it up with a file where it just goes in there because I want to keep as much material as possible and uh, I'm going to have to find some way to put this on a maybe on a little arbor or something I'm just kind of got a little burn on this side I was able to I should have done it before I parted it all the way off and, oh well too late for that I guess that order of operations thing that really does matter doesn't it Painted myself right into a corner. All right, we'll come back here in a little bit. All right, well, this may be overkill on precision here, but I got a 500 thousandths gauge block. I'm gonna just put a little scratch mark here. Got some bacon. Old outside screwballs, favorite favorite material. There we go. So we'll do that. We'll put this block back into the box. Um, first, though, I want to get some of this, uh, what is it, CMD's Extreme Pressure Lube. It's, it's good for strong gauge blocks, so. Put my finger and we'll rub some of this stuff on there. Just so you don't want this surface here to corrode ever. You don't want it to wear or anything. Because it's, a uh, very precisely ground or lapped. And these things are pretty spendy to get them, so I'll try to keep them in as good a condition as possible. And I've got the wax paper here still, so I'll go ahead and wrap it back up. Wow. Not a good hole in the thing. Yeah. Oh well. It's going back into its protective case anyway, so. Alright, I'm going to go into the other room there. Break out the old hacksaw and cut that slot. All right, I got this thing set up in the vise. Let's see if I can reach around the camera here without bumping into it too much. I got a, I got a small uh, triangular file here. I'm gonna kind of use it to give myself a little starting nick. Uh, be a little bit more careful than than trying to. Just start with the with the hacksaw. Hacksaw is not super high precision tool, and I'm gonna try to stay away from my line just a little bit. Okay, put one over here. I 
That'll give me a little something for the saw to start into because this is a round surface so it's probably gonna wanna probably gonna wanna slide down the hill. Alright. <clears throat> love that sound. on that we didn't cut over a line so now we'll try this side here hopefully we'll do just as well Got a lot more meat on this side let's see if I can take this file maybe push that groove a little closer to the line now I'm gonna have to file off a whole bunch of material here a little bit better. Waste. Well, let's see on this here. I think you can see it anyway. I left my scribe line, so now I'm gonna find myself a flat file. I'll hold it this way here, and probably I'll do this side first. file down to them lines and I'll check it with my my part I got it sitting over here uh, however I don't have any files here so I'll be right back all right I got my file here what do I got here eh, doesn't say <laughs> no it must not mean it's a really high quality file uh, but it's it's pretty good and sharp. It's just double cut file, so be careful we don't cut into that throat. I pick this one here because it'll remove the material pretty quick because I got a lot of stuff on this side. And this slot isn't doing anything except allowing the part to pass into position, so it's not really very important. time I can I always like to do stuff with hand tools because 
is an opportunity to stay and practice. You know, I can file on something silly little thing like this, and you know, the next time maybe I'm doing something that's maybe it's important, but it's really good. I know this isn't that important of a part. It's almost down to the line. I'm looking like I'm pretty level from here. When you're doing this, this isn't a safe edge file. It's important to, you know, be careful not to get in there and start chewing up the inside of the bore. Given a pretty good finish. Alright, file on this side. This piece of material is like 12014 or something like that I think it's it's let it stock for sure cut it really nice on the lathe Just shy of the line, but I want to check it on the part and see if it's if it'll slip over it. The more material I can leave on here, the better. Yeah. All right, well it goes. You can see uh, get a, it's a little bit snug because there's kind of a little bit of a burr on here. So I guess I can just use my fine triangular file here. Oops. Put it back into here. Press these burrs up. Okay. Draw a file of that off of there. that digging into nothing. Parts are really difficult to work with sometimes. Just imagine what these guys that hand make watches go through.
get myself some of them no good deburring tools, I guess, huh? They probably got one special made for doing this exact sort of a thing. Alright, that's got it pretty good. Yeah, while well, I'm at it, I might as well. Need to. Well. I'm going to do it off camera just because it's difficult trying to work in front of the camera where you can see, but I still need to get that edge. Remember, next time, deburr it before it's parted all the way off, or before your parting tool digs in, embeds itself into the bed. <laughs> anyway. Alright, we'll come back and I'll, I'll put this piece together over there, and that'll be it for this little part of the repair. Oh, no. Oh. Before I cut away, I guess I could show you my little, little accessory from my table here. It's just a big, uh, got a piece of 2x4 right here, and uh, I mortised out up here. Well, that doesn't come off easy, but anyway, I put a big mortise in there, and then I, I saw it in, and I put wedges in. So this is like wedged on, it's all glued together. Uh, this is really handy for lifting it up like that, and I've got a a little bird's mouth uh, piece of wood over here, like this, so I can put this thing and I can clamp it down onto this and then I can get like a fret saw or something like that in here, uh, just handy for, you know, you don't want to be kneeling on the ground trying to saw this stuff out if you're out there working at it for, excuse me, for a long time. Anyway, that's it for that.